Um, it's 4.30, so we will um, get our, mo our, our motion started. Our meeting started, so at this time, if we could stand for the <laughs> At this time, we'll take a moment for a silent meditation, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, in closing our packet are our minutes from our December 16, 2019 meeting. Has everyone had a chance to review them? So can I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Second. Okay. All right. Um, the the uh, minutes were approved by Mr. Norvell and seconded by Mr. Lee. All in favor of our motion? So you might say an aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Were there any questions or any additions to the minutes? Okay. All right, at this time, we'll have our director's reports. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's, let's, uh, we're going to jump ahead on our, um, our uh, agenda. Let's jump down to approval of the bills. We have our um, insurance company, General Insurance, here with us today. And so he will give us an overview. We um, invite him in, I think, once a year to go over our insurance. So um, we will turn it over to General Insurance. Hey, I am David from General Insurance. Um, I believe that I can give you a copy of some. So what we have is we have two policies that are up for renewal. They renew on the 22nd, which is tomorrow. We have a business owner's policy and we have a workers' compensation policy. Um, in our summary here, uh, the majority of the property is covered under the HAI program and all that. We do have some of it that we write for you guys. Um, this building here at 621 uh, East Michigan Boulevard is covered with us um, through auto owners, both of our company and the BAPA with auto owners. Uh, we've got $462,000 in this building. It's a $500 deductible for any of the property stuff. Um, business personal property, which is our contents, tables, chairs, office equipment, all that stuff, uh, $71,430 here. Um, and then the business income is covered up to 12 months at the actual loss of state. What that means is if we are down due to a covered cause of loss, that the revenues that the entity had earned could be recouped. Uh, equipment breakdown is also covered. And we have all of those coverages at the three locations that we have, which is here, 226 Mira Hill, and um, 1007 East 8th Street. Those other two properties, we had business personal property there, but not the buildings. So we covered $31,090 at 226 Mira Hill. And at uh, 1007 East 8th, we had 93,200. And as long as we haven't made any major purchases and those numbers all still look good, we can keep them as they are. Um, we have on um, this building here, U.S. Bank is lost Bay. So if any changes, please let us know. Um, inherent with the business owner's policy is the liability that extends with that. Currently, um, the limits are 300,000 per occurrence and 600,000 aggregate in the total. Um, I would like to make a recommendation that we change those limits and move those limits up to a million. Um, and here in the marketplace today, we're really seeing about a million dollars per occurrence, two million aggregate in the total. We feel a lot more comfortable recommending that coverage. Uh, the price difference on that versus where we're currently at is um, the last page for you there, it's $21.27 annually to move that up. So I, I would say that's uh, incredibly cost effective for us and I would highly suggest that we do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have in the BOP, there's a $250,000 employment practices liability coverage. There's a $10,000 deductible with that. Employment practice liability coverage is excluded in the GL policy. In order to find the coverage, we have to have the endorsement or a standalone model line policy. 
This is essentially coverage for um, army good bosses. Failure to hire, um, sexual harassment, wage mm -hmm. power, discrimination, wrongful termination, all that stuff falls with the purview of the employment practices policy and is not included in general liability. So we've got that, and we have $250,000 in coverage on that. Questions on any of the business owner's policy or the property stuff? Okay. On workers' compensation, uh, workers' compensation, how that goes is in the event of any injury, um, it pays whatever the state says that we have to pay. So it goes for statutory coverage. The employer's liability portion of it is half a million dollars limits there. That is all based um, on class code and payroll. And the class codes and payrolls are below. Um, those are all audited a month after the policy's inception. And if there's any changes, big changes one way or the other, we endorse the policy, ask if it's going to stay the same moving forward or if it was just kind of a one year anomaly. Then I include the premium summary on the next page for you there. And you can see for the business owner's policy that the premium stayed essentially flat over the last three years. Um, like I said, if we increase it to uh, 1 million, 2 million on the GL, that would go up slightly, but by slightly, we're talking $21.27. Uh, work count to stay pretty flat, um, and like I said, that's that's a factor of the payroll dollars. So if payroll stays the same, it should be the same. Questions for me on the workers' count of the business owner's policy? No? Here we go. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to bring to attention, we have um, a couple of different policies that we have. We've got the business owners and work count that's on the 22nd. We also have an auto policy that we use on March 24th, um, a motor machinery policy on March 27th, and then a current policy on May 1st. So I'd like to talk to Lula and, and look and see if we might be able to find a common effective date for all of these so that the yes. can make a decision once a year. Mm -hmm. That's what they'd like to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Norman and I will follow that up and find the time Okay. Okay. All right. There's nothing else for me. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Thank you so much for your time. Can you go ahead and get a motion? Yeah. So we all had a chance to review um, the insurance, our, our um, insurance coverage for um, our update. Um, there was a recommendation that we increase the um, business liability from three hundred thousand. Um, Three hundred to six hundred thousand to a million, a million to two million. Um, are there any questions about that? Any suggestions? Any conversation about that change? Which was the cost of increasing? It was twenty one dollars and twenty seven cents annually. Cost effect. That's cost effect. That's, that probably sounds good? All right. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to make sure we covered that before you left in case any questions. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So can we, uh, after reviewing the updated bill, can we have a motion to accept the insurance um, update as a... So move. Yeah, okay. And second, all right. We have to do it individually. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going to approve the business side. No, which one is first? The property coverage? Business, business owner's policy. Yeah. Business owner's policy. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I got you. All right. Can I have a motion to approve the business owner's policy? Mm -hmm. All right. And can I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by, sa by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, at this time, we would also like to have a motion to accept the workman's comp policy. Motion. Okay. And second. Approval by Mr. Lee and second by Mr. Norvell. All in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motions are carried. Thank you. Yes. Is a, a vote or something on the recommendation? Is that in order now? We have that to we, vote on that for the $21 increase. Increase liability. Right. 
Okay, are you making a motion? Yes, I <laughs> make a motion that the uh, liability be increased from three hundred thousand, six hundred thousand to one million at a price of twenty one dollars and twenty seven cent annually. Okay. So, second. All right. Motion by Mr. Novell and second by Mr. Lee. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Thank you. Okay. All right, so now we'll move back up to our director's reports. And I see uh, Mrs. Webster, you're here, so we'll start with you. The blue red bars for the total of 99 units, which 97 of those units are occupied with two vacancies. One of the vacancies is used for the residential council office, and the other unit is currently being um, under modification, and then I'm trying to get on three, and then there is one unit that is being switched over from the transfer from another tenant um, due to health reasons from another um, scattered site. For Lakeland space, we have a total of 50 units. 44 are occupied with the vacancy of six. One is currently under modification and is expected to be given to me by tomorrow. For maintenance, four units are waiting or pending rehab, and one unit is under modification. As far as activity for the month of December, the general office pass, the monthly food bags and commodity boxes will be ordered in the food bank annual recertifications and entrance, and also we were um, a, an agency host site for uh, the Fly High Youth Service as they gave out toys and fed the community for Christmas for last month. And that's the end of my report. Any questions for Mrs. Webster? So I'd just like to make a comment. I spoke with Mr. Fly regarding that toy giveaway and uh, for him, a little bit of success. It, it was a very good very 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 Yeah, there were no one, there was no one that was turned away. In fact, right. I think they just had a couple of items that were left over. So mm -hmm. nice. went off real well. Yeah. Good. Nice. All right. At this time, we'll have Mrs. Howell to go our Section Eight Housing Choice Voucher Program. We had 371 vouchers, which is our baseline that never changed. Mm -hmm. We had 301 lease stop, 60 year open. Out of that 60, we had 10 searching uh, for units still. And then in December, I sent out uh, 13 letters for orientation class to issue vouchers this month. And currently, I pulled 100 people from the waiting list. They're supposed to submit their documents to determine mm -hmm. the eligibility by February 3rd. So if they don't, if you don't have their paperwork by February 3rd, what's your process from there? They get removed from the waiting list. Okay, and then you just go <laughs> down the list and add additional clients on, I mean, do you send out additional letters? You just move them. How do you do that? They get removed, and once I'm done, um, with whatever I have left out of the hundred that were sent, if mm -hmm. I need to, then I will send them on that. Okay. Any other questions from Mrs. Hall? No? Okay. All right. I see Mr. Kelly's report. Is it in here? Mm -hmm. Mr. Kelly? Oh, um, did I miss it? I'm sorry. Work order this Okay, got it. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, can you give us your report? I have. Emergency at the work, so I had to let my copy on the envelope. Okay. So if you have any questions for me, I can ask any questions you have. Okay. I guess, can you give us a general update of what's going on with maintenance? Um, it, it, especially as it relates to um, Lakeland Estates. I mean, we, we continue doing the work for maintenance. Okay. Uh, 
that's and then I got one guy doing uh, the work for us, doing the day emergency work for us, but the rest of them are doing rehab. Okay. Have you seen an increase in emergency uh, workforce with the right now, with the climate change? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We get a lot of more noise and water crossing, water freezing. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Kelly? Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Morgan, yes, can you give us an update on the? Uh, <clears throat> Housing inspections. Can you give us an overview of what's going on with your inspections? Are you seeing any trends of anything that the board needs to be aware of? No. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Moria? Okay. All right. Okay. That concludes our management reports. Now we'll turn it over to. Um, well, I guess we should we talk about our incident report right here at this point? Okay. All right. We have um, Officer Corley with us today, and we uh, know that we've seen an increase in our incident reports. And um, I, I think if he could just give us an overview, just kind of what's been going on, um, we would like to commend you for your services and making sure our properties are handled. And, and secure and safe for our residents as first and foremost to us. So we're, we're glad to see that. But we're not glad to see the increase of incident reports. So if you could just give us an update. I think really, uh, I'm going to say the increase in terms of different reports reporting. Um, this is a, a, a remedial work. This is the first time I've been asked last couple months to provide a report to the, to the board. So mm -hmm. I think I, uh, we've tried uh, track things differently and kept you guys more abreast of incidents that normally I would just wouldn't, you know, we just kind of take care of it by all. Now, um, here in the last six months, I've been trying to uh, make sure that the communication is better myself and the management so that way I know what they need, you know, we need. And so when the incidents are so, for instance, when people are trespassed in the past, we'll just have them to be trespassed and they would be on the list. Now, what I make sure I do is there's an incident report for every trespass, even if I don't do it or Greg knows other uh, employees, which can say, this off to you guys. But if somebody from our, our shift news, if they do something, they let something where I make sure it's an incident report. So that way it's better for us to track and, mm -hmm. and it's easier um, to keep uh, abreast on what's going on. And that way it's not one of those things where something's important and two months later it's important, something happens and then, you know, it's like we're starting over from square one up, but now it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a trail of things. Sure. And, and it helps manage them better, you know, determine how they want to uh, reprimand those people who are the offenders of that. So, um, it may seem like an increase, but it's just a, a better way of tracking mm -hmm. and um, of reporting things on our end of security. Because before, you know, we could do things, mm -hmm. and I guess when we got too bad, we were allowed to say, Mrs. Webster, hey, this is my control. But now, you know, when it's happening, Mrs. Webster and Mrs. House, Mrs. Uh, Thomas, all are aware of it now, and they can tell us what they want us yeah. to do better place instead of us. So I think it's just a better way of you know, reporting for us and tracking um, for me. It keeps me in line too, also, <laughs> so I kind of know what's going on, and then also let you guys kind of know what's going on. So if you have any problems or have any concerns or um, remedies that you guys think can, you know, we can do better on the security unit. Like I got I sent Mrs. Thomas a, a message this year. You know, our goal is security, and again, I've been working for the housing authority for a while, mm -hmm. but we start looking at things as you progress on how you can do things better. So my goal is, of course, to do better things better, not just. And, and for the unfortunate things, we're making this more safe for tenants and making the, the way that people look at our properties right. as making it look safe and not a, not a sore thumb in the community, but a place of, you know, where mm -hmm. people can say, hey, they're doing things right there, you know, to make sure everything is, everybody has you know, the proper housing accommodation as far as the security and so forth. So. Okay. But if you guys have any questions about um, the report that you have, I'm free to you know, answer if you ask me questions. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? I have one. The, the trespass list, uh, you know, the one, uh, that's additional. We, we just we have done that additionally. Yeah. Uh, if someone's uh, on the list and uh, this is, uh, and, and they're out here, and you stop them, what, what would, it, would be the next procedure? Uh, uh, so once they're issued a trespass from a police officer, 
Um, the next time they're uh, trespass, they uh, can be arrested. Um, I will tell you guys, um, from being 20 years in law enforcement, um, I'm not, no matter what people say, I'm not an arrest another type of person. <laughs> I, I have worked with some of the people who have been out here. I mean, you know, someone from some of the clientele we have, the, the visitors that are, are, are residents get out here, a lot of times, you know, their issues are a little bit bigger than what a common trespass may seem. So I have worked with people in the past, I haven't arrested everybody, but they will be arrested. What we're doing better now with the police department is the same list that the house authority has is put into a file for our shift units. Okay. So if you come out here for a problem, you can also see that list that we have for that other than that. If it's, if it's not in the, if, if those guys don't run or ask dispatch to look at our database from, they will never know there's a trust file. So now the same list that, that the management is here, I put into the police department now to make it work up. So they can either, you know, if it's needed, a lot of times to alleviate some of the problems, um, arrests might have to be made. But myself and Greg have, we're out here more. So Greg is more out here, I'm more out Lake on the States, and then we do a little bit together. So we kind of know um, the people who, you know, may be arrested. It's like the people who may be worked with, you know. Just tell you, I think the other day I dealt with somebody and it was one of those things where, you know, I just told her, hey, look, you've been trespassed. You've been warned. Mm -hmm. The next time, mm -hmm. you will be arrested. But again, I'm kind of in a situation that yeah, I could arrest her. But you know, would that really have done her any justice? You know, none. So. Okay. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Officer Porter? Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Um, Mrs. Thomas, that um, I don't see. Michelle. Did she give me any updates? Um, she did. Okay, Mrs. Allison, so there was any, any updates? That's just the report. She's, that's okay, that's just her report that she submitted. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll have our um, financial report update from our um, our director. Okay, you should have a copy of that in front of you. It's for October 1st, which is our fiscal year start. Um, we started out with a budget amount that we've budgeted for the year. That's income, uh, rent, um, utility terms, we made a pool. Um, <coughs> other receipts is what we received from HUD, more or less. Um, $38,000 were received in rent. $140.28 other income, which could be a sale of appliance, or it could be um, um, uh, utilities, or it could be a work order charge. And then other receipts, 17616, for a total of 30187 operating subsidy that we received from HUD. That was for one month for the, October, for the month of October. Our budget so far, um, it has been semi-approved by HUD, and right now we're only funded at 96.6%. And they only gave us um, the month of December, January, and half of February. Um, I got a, a letter the other day where they're gonna give us, they're kind of like giving it to us in April. They usually give it to us every month, but now it's like a month and a half. So whatever I receive for January, and half of February is 30,000, excuse me, for October 30,187. For a total of revenue for the month of October, we received 69,351.34. Um, your budgeted amount is the 226,680 for administrative salary, legal expense training, accounting fees, and we expended 18,505.43. Tenant services is $6,000. That's the one I'm gonna move over to our reserves. What we budgeted for utilities was $334,300. Uh, I believe for October, that's our that's when the weather starts to starts to change. $13,364.62, and that includes water and electric and gas. Maintenance department budget uh, $284,557. That includes material and contract costs. We spend 
Protection service, we budget $38,000. We only spend it $659.36, and that's based on the hours of security work for that month, which is not a lot of hours. Uh, general expense, insurance, we budgeted $135,353. We only expended $1,395.16. Non routine maintenance is money that, that HUD asked us to put aside for repairs that we may have. We expended $1,104 for a total of $61,702.43. So we came in under, uh, a little under $7,000 for that month. Um, your sheet is behind it, it's kind of like your backup sheet that shows where uh, the budget amounts are, what the monies we collected for rent, how much we paid for administrative salary, and then it breaks it out and all the other things that we paid for during that month. Page two is pretty much the same thing, what we expended for uh, October 1st, October 31st for salaries and then contract costs. Which is uh, extermination repairs of the services and cable. Uh, one of the things that we're not budgeted for is the um, treatment of bed bugs, so we kind of like keep that cost every year. Um, put that stick on that. Is that, an, is that a one time fee, the bed bug charge, or is it? The bed bugs is per unit, and it all depends on the type of treatment. Heat is usually the most expensive. So that's a cost that we normally see during the year because HUD does not fund that. Huh. Any questions? Yeah. This is for October. This is just for the month of October. Yes, just for the month of October. Uh, so do we have a period on November and December? Uh, November, I think she just sent me the books last week. We can sit down and go over there within the next two weeks before this next board meeting. Um, December, she's still working on it. I do have November books, but based on what we were doing for this month, it was October that was done and the report was finished. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If there are no other questions, um, can I have a motion to accept um, the director's report? Second. Mm -hmm. Motion accepted by Mrs. Malone, second by Ms. Babb. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, thank you. Committee reports, um, personnel committee. Are there any reports to come before us at this time? Uh, I think Mr. Uh, Nothing at this time for the personnel committee. Okay. Uh, we like to hold off on that until we have a committee meeting on that before we bring. Before you bring it to the board. board. Okay. All right. Um, asset committee. Anything to come before us for the asset committee? Not at this time. Okay. All right. So there are no committee reports. Any other committee that I'm missing? Okay. Um, under old business union negotiations. Uh, Madam Chair, under uh, union negotiations, I think uh, last month we asked the executive director to send a letter to the uh, union. And uh, I hadn't heard anything back from that. Uh, so I have to ask the executive director if we sent a letter to the union with our last uh, proposal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything from them? No. Did this letter go on the 16th of January? Uh, what's the date on it? January 16th. Yep. Mm -hmm. Today's the 21st. It was out yesterday was a holiday. I don't know if anything came in the mail today because Rob was not here. Response are usually great. 
I thought we had said something last year about some of this back in December. I thought we discussed sending this out. We discussed it on January the 6th when we had the, that meeting to send that out. Okay. Well, if it was gone, if it went out on the 16th, that was just last Thursday. He, I mean, yeah. and yet he probably received it. Well, we know that he received it. However, that probably is not enough time to really review it with yesterday being a holiday. So maybe we'll do something for approval to make sure that the wording was correct. And when are we going to, uh, when they, uh, we extend it? Yeah. February 29th. February 29th. Okay. okay. Anything else regarding the union negotiations? Um, the SIG day buyback, um, at this time we're removing that item from the agenda. There's nothing to be discussed on that at this time. Um, Ms. Thomas, can you give us a pipeline safety update? Um, um, we had a regulatory commission send an email over with a couple of things that I talked about last month that they were kind of concerned about while they were revisions. To our owner operator manual, there were some updates um, that Andrew did. He corrected the updates, and you have a copy of those um, updates. Um, I think one was uh, contact information, the other one was just minor thing so uh, just to stay in compliance with IURC I want to work with motions for those approvals so I can forward the information over to them to show that we're still in compliance. If I may. Mm -hmm. you, you should have in your packets the operation and maintenance emergency manual. That's what we're talking about. This needs to be board approved for it to go in the manual. And this is a requirement that IURC would request us to do in order to remain compliant with our manual. So we need to go on. Correct. So has our... This would have went to asset management, right? Pardon? This would have, I mean, has, has anyone seen this before now? Is this the first of everyone seeing this? Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. I, I don't know. Do you guys have any questions? I don't know. Mm. Well, we'll be happy to answer any questions. What I, what I will inform the board, though, is this information that's in these manuals is directed to us by the professionals that handle this. And so in order to be compliant, with pipeline safety regulations, they recommend that we include this in our in our manual. And so we're just following the recommendations Fair. of what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the company? Um, USDI. USDI is the company that we contract with to make sure that we remain in compliance with pipeline regulation. And as of last month, the IURC is is very happy with everything that we've done to correct our pipeline issues from the past. So I strongly suggest that this uh, information that needs to be added to the manual be done today so that we can add it and be in, can continue to remain in compliance with IURC's regulations. Any questions regarding the updates? Okay. How long have we had the, um, the changes, the recommended changes? Um, I think I sent an email out in December to Nielsen regarding that um, to see if I need to bring it before the board members after the last board meeting. So, so after, after our last board After December yeah. Yeah, so 19th was meeting, was it 16th? It would have been after the last board meeting, December. After December 16th. Okay, so we're getting updates every quarter or something similar? No, we don't know. No, they, whenever there's a new, from what I understand, it's pretty technical and complicated. Whenever there's a, an update that needs to be done, USDI suggests it to us. But in order for it to be official and a part of our manual, we can't just include it. We have to bring it in front of the board for it to be approved to, so, it that, so that it becomes a part of our manual. So whenever they give us an update that we need to include, what we do then is we present it to the board so that you guys can vote on it to include it in the manual. And then we can report back to the IURC, hey, look, our manual is up to date and in compliance with the regulatory rules. 
Go ahead. Mm -hmm. At this time, we have the pipeline safety updates presented to us. Um, can I have an approval? Gentlemen. Second. 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 We have an approval by Mr. Lee and a second by Mr. Novell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Uh, Ms. Thomas, if you can give us an update on our CMAP groups. In your packet, you can see the last two packs four that we, um, I believe, Mr. Malone had asked me to include that in the packet. Um, it's been a year since we scored 100% on our CMAP. I believe year, last year we only scored 96%. This year we scored 100%, which is really um, good for September 30th, 2019. Any questions regarding the CMAP scores? 100%. 100%. 100%. You have to have a motion to have No, you don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, next, I'm sorry. Can we go back to Sure. Um, can we, we're going to, uh, Mr. Malone has asked that we review the personnel committee. Um, if we could go back up to that okay. item D1, please. I'm sorry, we missed something earlier. We need to. Uh, at uh, some time uh, in the very near future, let's say starting in February, uh, we need to go and do the personnel policy that we, we can address some of these other issues that we have about the buybacks and all of that. that thing. So Ms. Thomas has to do, uh, let's get something set up for February so we can do our personnel policy. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Maloney. We'll have Robin contact the committee to get a date scheduled for February as soon as possible to start reviewing those personnel policies. We also uh, noted that Mr. Lee is a part of that Yes. Thank you for that. Also, please note that Mr. Lee is a part of the personnel, personnel committee. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay, new business. Um, in your packet, there's a resolution um, for grant, the 2020 grant resolution. Um, and this resolution um, allows, um, gives Ms. Thomas the authority to, to write grants to seek additional um, grants. So um, at this time, can we have an approval to the 2020 grant resolution? Permission for her to write the grant or mm -hmm. to, grant writer, yep. No, it's so. for her. It's for the executive director to submit grant applications. Mm -hmm. Well, let me back up. Write the grant and submit. Yeah. Write them and yeah, write and submit the grants. Can you vote on it now? Yes. So moved. Okay. All right, Mr. Norvell. Approved, second by Mr. Lee. All in favor, favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Right. Um, anything else before the board? Can we before the board? At this time, we have um, public, it's open for public comment. Um, officer, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Mrs. Thomas, um, Mr. Malone has asked, are we still working on Fridays? Yes. Yes. The managers are here to want to update the report on where they are as far as uh, the information. No, I thought we said we were going to suspend that. Mm -hmm. That's the piece of suspension that we were going to have to do that. Yeah. 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 I apologize. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know. Now say that again. That is to be suspended for Friday work. Effective when? Uh, we, I thought we talked about it uh, at our last meeting, uh, but if we didn't, uh, we said we would do this not permanently. And so that, that should be, uh, we did, not to cut y'all, we did specifically talk about uh, ending that, but we didn't give a specific date. 
So that's, I guess that's what we're more or less looking for now is a, a date. It's an agreement that this Friday is going to be definitely suspended, but we don't have a effective date. If that's what we need is an effective date. Would you like to make, uh, uh, I, I recommend uh, I move that we suspend it immediately. I second. Is there any discussion? Is there any other discussion or um, can you ask Thomas, is there anything you want to add? So uh, if we suspend it, if we suspend it effectively immediately, we might as well get ready to contract the work out. So if that's what we're looking to do, we can we can do that. Because that's more or less what's gonna happen. If a contractor needs to bring somebody else in to do the job, it's more or less what, what, we're, what you're deciding to do. I, I think the problem we've got is that this has gone on much longer than anticipated. Uh, it was clearly understood that this would not be a permanent thing, but now it's hard to say. Okay, see my concern is you take them, uh, you know, it costs, you know, we're taking funds that, uh, and moving them somewhere else that we, were, that we only said we were gonna do temporarily to bring us in line. Now, if they couldn't bring us in line, uh, with the amount of time that they had, maybe we should have contracted out. But it's an ongoing process. I know it's an so ongoing it's process. Ongoing. Section 8 is totally different from public housing. I understand that. And we asked Mrs. Webster to take on additional units. I, I, I understand that too, Ms. Thomas, but we said that we were only going to do this for a period of time. Now, we need to go back and review and take another look at this. We will. Okay, right now, uh, I move that we suspend. I don't even really think we have to take a vote on this because it's already been voted on that we would do this for a period of time. Okay. And that time is up, in my opinion. But if we need to take a vote on it, I'll make a motion that we suspend this Friday work immediately. Um, let, me, let me ask a few questions just to make sure that we have a record clear here. Was this discussed at the last meeting? Was it voted on last meeting? Well, it was voted on, but mm -hmm. discussed. We discussed. did not have a definite date to suspend. So there was, was there opportunity to discuss this at the last meeting? And I apologize because I was not here. We have been discussing this. Okay. And when we made the motion and it was approved to do this, we said in that motion that it would not last forever. Right. Understood. The, the only. Thing However, we didn't have a. I'm sorry. We didn't, we didn't have a date. Right. We just said forever. My my suggestion is I think the board can can elect to have this motion now. But it sounds like there's still some confusion between uh, Ms. Thomas and the board. Mm -hmm. My recommendation was to, to agenda this mm -hmm. for the next mm -hmm. meeting so that there could be further discussion on the date and any, any other information that Ms. Norma needs to present to the board can be done so at that time. And it's not just something that we add to the agenda because it seems like it's a it's an a, an important matter to discuss and have an opportunity for anyone else that needs to say anything to present it to the board. As I well. think we differ on the definition of a period of time. Mm -hmm. No. Right. I, I think it would be nice if we had an update as to what what progress has been made working the Friday hours. I, I mean, I guess I would like to know that. Um, 
uh, we have a, a housing manager that has a question. And also, is, is there a date? I mean, are we working towards a date? Are we, because Ms. Thomas is saying that this could be indefinite. You know, the work is there. It's not going to go anywhere. No, so, not. but that's that's not going to no, remedy the, the projected date or an anticipated date. We said we would give them the opportunity and the state to bring this paperwork in line. Now, paperwork is continuing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But there was so much excess paperwork, we said, okay, you're going to work uh, on Friday. We gave them the opportunity to do that, uh, to bring our uh, paperwork in line uh, so we would be halfway in compliance or as much in compliance as we can with it. Uh, now, that was the understanding. And, I and at this point, we don't have any idea where we're at. And I think we've gone beyond, and uh, I have a motion on the floor. Mm -hmm. That's true. And if, if, what I'll say is if the, board, if the board feels like there's a, enough information to make the decision, then you're absolutely under your rights to do that. I have a motion on the floor because if we need to go and get some additional help, the board has the ability to do that. So I, I leave my motion on the floor. There's a second, too. There's just any second, further discussion. Second. You got to ask for a vote. Call for a vote. So, can we have further discussion at this time? Because Ms. Um, Mrs. Howell has her hand up. Uh, or do usually, we have to? Usually, the discussion is left to the board, not any okay. other. Um, okay. Now, that being I'm, said, I'm sorry. If, if the board calls on another individual not on this board they can comment to further the board member's position do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. the discussion is amongst the board but if mm -hmm. there's someone that you wish to call on regarding any more information that is relevant to the board the board can do that as a board member okay so she's she's excited so we have a, a, a motion on the floor mr mr malone um and a second by Mr. Novell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, signify by saying nay, right? Yeah. Nay. And ayes carry, motion carry. Um, now we'll open it up for public comment. Thank you. <laughs> if you can introduce yourself and let us know who you are again, I, I know you ran before, but. My name is oh, Lisa Chrysler. I'm here to represent Michigan City House of Hope and an organization called NBC Training Center. I was here at your last meeting to propose your Lakeland Estates Learning Center where we can do some programs for your residents along with the Lakeland Estate and the Michigan City residents also. I sent over a partnership in on you to Ms. Webster. Um, it was kind of at the last minute okay. because we're going to tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I have uh, proposed to her about what I can do there, that I'm not looking for any payment from you guys, like something like a um, contracting work. Mm -hmm. If I can have full access to that facility to bring in these programs, and Ms. Webster also has an outline that I presented to her last Friday when I met with her about certain things that I like to do. Along with um, the cost, um, writing grants, that's good to hear that Ms. Thomas will be writing grants because I have a slew of people here in Michigan City, along with your councilman. Um, I've talked to Gene Simmons, who's over the sixth ward over there, Sean Fitzpatrick, he's been working with me constantly mm -hmm. to get programs here, and also with Ms. Angie Nelson Dorch. I hope I didn't set up. Mm -hmm. um, they are looking to work with me to do a lot of things with the community along with the housing. Um, working with partnerships, even with the AKA Center, working with um, your newly elected Julianne Ashley. I have um, talks with her. She does services with, even with your um, the police department, which I think is a great need for the community. Just to give you a little insight on myself, um, I've been working with Ms. Webster for over two and a half years, but she's also been real instrumental with helping the residents here that are 55 and older get into training programs, which I brought some literature for that. Lake County, Porter County, LaPorte County happens to be one of my counties here, and I have to say that Ms. Thompson and Ms. Um, Webster have been really working with residents here to get them employment for as training. So our program has been around for 45 years. We've been in Indiana, but we're, um, our house is in um, uh, Chicago. 
We have residents that actually live here on your premises that are in our training program who walk around and may work in front office. Um, they're working with maintenance. It's a lot of things that they can do to develop some training skills, but we are paying them through state funding. Right now, we are at 40 hours a week. That's 80 hours every two weeks that we pay seniors that are 55 and older, depending on where they're at with their income. Usually when they're in the housing, this is substitute income for them. This information is good for them, this training. They're not employed through housing. They're not employed through national aid. Or they're in the training program, almost like your AARPs or your goodwill services. But you have one here in um, Michigan City, which is national able. We pay them the 725 an hour to develop these skills and they can be in this program for four years. We're also able to work with them to develop resume writing, which is some of the things that we're going to offer there at the uh, Lakeland Estate. We also have the talks with the Urban League to come and hopefully maybe do some taxes for your residents that are low income, that maybe not have um, transportation to get where they need to go. I have reached out to the library, which I was trying to get someone to come there, but because they are under um, contract, everyone has to go to that area there on their library. We're also working with those who work with the hospitals to do nutrition programs. Right now, here on Michigan Boulevard, I have an office at the trustee's office every Tuesdays and Thursdays and every other Saturday through our Michigan City House of Hope. We do NA meetings, and a lot of them are having to come from your housing authority. But if we can utilize the center over there for those that maybe don't have the transportation, this is also an opportunity for us to do evening programs with them, especially for those that may have children, that we can have something set up with activities and games and things that they will have in order to help develop those employment skills, training skills, and opportunities for them to know that there's other avenues besides going into housing. Let's face it, how many points do we This program was set up for those that really need it. But for those that are ready and been in the program for housing for so long, it's time for them to find another avenue. Why, why isn't that center being used the way it should be? So like I'm proposing to um, the housing, I've already had to give my proposal to Ms. Webster. That is something that I would love to utilize here to develop those skill sets for those residents along with other residents. We also want to work with the veterans. We're also working with the homeless community um, through the home team that I'm a part of. And we just want to keep on and growing with that. Any questions? I do have some literature here for anybody that's interested. I will leave it here for um, staying here, but you also have a post for us in the front. Does this um, Ms. Thomas have a copy of your proposal? No, I just, I mean, I got it. Like, she just clearly got her board, so. Yeah. Right. And she, she has the outline as well. Okay. Yeah. I, I think this would be a good thing for Ms. Webster and Ms. Thomas probably to get together with our resident initiative um, committee and, and look at what we can do or if there's something that can be done um, with, with this program. Um, it seems very promising and I know that that center does need to be used. So I, I agree that that does and, need to be used. And just to bring one thing up, when I talked to the six ward councilman over there, I, mean, I told him that also having the programs are nice, but let's do some communication over there. Let's make it look like it's inviting. Right. That's also a center where people that live in that area because you don't have anything, they can come in and maybe use that center, and maybe that could be some income that we can kind of generate if people want to rent it out or if they want to have um, meetings or so on. But let's make it look the part as well as for those to be invited to come sure. here and do that. With, uh, with no cost, my organization were willing to do that, um, the painting, uh, fix it up, mm -hmm. flowers, donations, or whatever, so we can get it going. I hear your budget, I hear what's going on, I am working with um, HUD to find out what committee I can get on on HUD to see what they're doing for Northwestern Indiana in general, because the housing authority here in Michigan City is not the only one that's having this problem, but there's a sense out there through HUD that if you're not talking about it or they see a visible face, you get lost in the tracks. But I also reached out with um, the GMI, that's a program for entrepreneurs, which I'm a part of and I'm a speaker for in Gary. Every other month, they have an eight-week course that they have for entrepreneurs in the community that they have put together. I've talked to um, one of the liaison, their funding comes from the Legacy Foundation, 
Right now, everything was done in Lake County. From what I understand, the Legacy Foundation is trying to branch out a little bit more. Why are we developing that right here in your housing? Mm -hmm. And that can start from as young as 16 and up. We have to give these, these, these people, residents in general, I what your nationality is, an opportunity to see that there's other things out here. And it's right here in your community. In order for us to do that, I have to continue to work with Ms. West along with the housing so we can get that going. We do have people that are in my program, I have to say, that are residents here at um, um, Michigan City Housing that I have one lady, I'm not going to say her name, she's going for her GED. Mm -hmm. Based on that, that's a part of the development with this program. So I'm letting you know that I'm working with the residents out here, whether it's through my job or in general, to give them those incentives. And believe it or not, you may have had these programs here for such a long time, but a lot of people don't know that you have them because the information is not visible. That's me with my mouth, my information, and the people that I know we can do that with. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So any other public comments? Oh, Mr. Fitzpatrick is gone. All right. Without any other uh, comments, no motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. All right. Okay. okay. And again, a residential initiative. Residential initiative committee, if you could please, uh, Ms. Webster, reach out to Ms. Thomas and you all coordinate time and discuss that. Thank you. Thank you.